Hello, my name is Raymond Chow and I am a PharmD candidate of 2021. And in this video, I will be talking about Nicina, also known as alagliptin. First, we'll start by going over counseling points for our patients who will be starting on this medication. Alagliptin is used to lower blood sugar in people with type 2 diabetes. It is taken once daily with or without food. Continue to take this drug even if you feel well. That being said, do not stop taking this medication unless the doctor instructs you to do so. Use this medication in addition to a healthy diet and exercise to help lower blood sugar. Take missed doses as soon as you remember. However, if it's close to the timing of your next dose, skip the missed dose and take the medication at your normal time. Do not take two doses at the same time. Although the medication is unlikely to cause low blood sugar or hypoglycemia on its own, risk for low blood sugar is higher when taken together with other medications that cause hypoglycemia, which include insulin or a sulfonylurea such as glipizide or glimepiride. Those other medications may need a dose reduction. Common side effects include runny or stuffy nose, headache, sore throat, and cold-like symptoms. Report to your doctor right away if you experience any signs of allergic reactions, such as hives or rash, difficulty swallowing or breathing, or any swelling of the face, lips, or throat. Also report any signs of liver problems, which include nausea or vomiting, stomach pain, fatigue, dark urine, and yellowing of the skin or eyes. Finally, report any joint pain and any skin reactions as well. Now we're going to go more in depth of Nicina. It is a dipeptidyl peptidase 4 or DPP4 inhibitor. It's indicated to be used as an adjunct to diet and exercise to improve glycemic control in adults with type 2 diabetes. It is not indicated for the treatment of type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis. The medication does require renal dose adjustments, and it can be used in patients with renal impairment and even end-stage renal disease. Unlike other DPP-4 inhibitors, alagliptin is available as generic. Now let's talk about its mechanism of action. Natural and creatine hormones such as glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1 is released by the small intestines in response to meals. These hormones cause glucose-dependent insulin release from pancreatic beta cells and lowers glucagon secretion from alpha cells, which then in turn reduce hepatic glucose production. Those hormones are inactivated by the DPP4 enzymes. Alagliptin inhibits this inactivation of incretin hormones and thereby increases their concentration, which then lowers glucose concentrations. Some of the effects that we would expect is that it will lower A1C by about 0.5 to 1% and the medication has neutral weight changes, meaning that it neither causes weight gain nor weight loss. The medication is formulated in three different tablets at 25 mg, 12.5 mg, and 6.25 mg. And once again, this medication is available as generic. The recommended dose is 25 milligrams once daily. For renal adjustment, you do not have to dose adjust for patients with creatinine clearance greater than or equal to 60. For those who fall between 30 and 60 in creatinine clearance, we want to dose adjust to 12.5 milligrams once daily. And for any patients that have a creatinine clearance below 30, we want to adjust that dose to 6.25 milligrams once daily. Per the manufacturer's labeling, there are no hepatic dose adjustments. However, we want to use caution in patients with liver disease. Warnings for this medication include acute pancreatitis, heart failure, hepatotoxicity, concurrent use with medications known to cause hypoglycemia, which then in turn may require dose reductions of insulin and or insulin secretagogues to avoid hypoglycemia, arthralgia, bolus pemphigoid. We want to avoid concurrent use with a GLP-1 receptor agonist due to the lack of added glycemic benefit. The only contraindication for this medication is hypersensitivity. 
Adverse reactions include nasal pharyngitis, which presents itself with stuffy nose, runny nose, or sore throat, headache, and upper respiratory tract infections, which present as cold-like symptoms. To monitor for efficacy, we want to look at hemoglobin A1c, and we're going to do this quarterly in patients who are not meeting their treatment goals or after a therapy change. And for other patients who do have stable glycemic control who are at treatment goals, we want to monitor those patients at least twice a year. We also want to look at serum glucose as well for efficacy. To monitor for safety, we want to look at renal functions, liver function tests, signs of symptoms of pancreatitis, and signs of symptoms of heart failure.